Welcome back to the channel where we are building a video game from scratch in Love 2D and Lua. Now, yeah, a little late stream. I had a, like, a 14-hour day today for work. I just got home, and then um, I've got to go back to Santa Fe in the morning, so I've got to get to sleep fairly soon. Um, but we are working on this method of exporting our tiles layer by layer. So the idea is we can export a ground layer and then export a collidable map object layer and then export a what I'm calling a top level tile layer which is something like the door here. So for the cabin it'll render the door and you know what? This is like this, our walking animation just looks a little off. Well, we can worry about that later, but... Um, we're going to work on this tiled map exporter. Now, we've got, you know, in, in tiled here, we can export all the tile IDs. But we need to go through, and we need to do a couple of things. We want to be able to export the first tile of an animatable, right? So these water has has four animatable tiles here. Ideally, we'd like to say, hey, whenever you see the starting tile of an animatable, go ahead and insert the function for that animatable into the current grid of the scene so that they update over time. So let's let's start there and then we'll worry about inserting collidable map objects. Um, and then we'll probably worry about actually segmenting the layers so that we can do a stacked, a stacked layer. Um, I'm not so sure how this is going to go, but we'll give it a shot here. Let's take a look at our map declarations and we'll see where... So like this is where we're inserting the animatables, right? It it sucks that it sucks that if we wanted all the water on that 82 scene, we have to manually insert all the water animatable functions into the scene here manually. I don't like that. Hey, Magnetonics, that's cool, man. You made it through all your goals. That's really sweet, dude. That's nice. Uh, especially if you can fit that all in an hour. An hour is like in dev time, that's like nothing. That's probably what, you know, we're probably only going to stream like 40 minutes tonight, maybe. So we'll see. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We have this global map. That is the dot Lua that tiled exports. And what we're doing is we're saying, hey, the layers field in that global map and the first layers field dot data. That is a table of 9,000 tile IDs just back to back to back to back. Now, we don't have a way yet of being able to say, and we had tried this where we say, hey, why don't we, you know, if the tile ID is equal to the same value of this water NM starter that we defined, you know, if the tile we're about to insert is an animatable tile, then go ahead and insert into the map row and map call, and that's right, but a function of an insert anim of a water anim spitter object frame at the given row and column for the current scene. So this is the numbers we need to fill today. You know, we can't hard code in a 5-2, but we need to hard code in whatever it um, turns out being, which is tricky because it's a 9,000 tile table and we don't have access to the given row and grid. We're kind of manually doing it here. So let's walk through what we're doing because um, we take this whole global map table and I'll show you what that looks like. It's just this. It's just this, right? So it's a bunch of stuff, but all we really care about is in the layers table, right? So we go to the layers and then we go to the data and that's the tile IDs for everything we export. So that's all we're worried about with this thing. So we're just saying, hey, go ahead 
and give me all the data for the first layer. We're only worried about the first layer just yet. So this is tiled map. We're putting the the value of whatever is in that data and we're putting it at the index of this tiled map. So at the end of this line of code, our tiled map has a 9,000 um, a 9,000 table object of all the tile IDs. And then we go ahead and give ourselves empty animatable table and empty entity tables for each of our maps. Now map is the grid of scenes and each scene um, is what's inside the map. So that's how it's kind of working. So we do, we declare this map row and map call and a scene row and scene call. And you know what we like the, like ideally we were, we would be able to just insert the anims here at the scene row and scene call, but we don't actually calculate this correctly. Um, because we don't use scene row anywhere in this, in this field here. So let's just keep walking through it and we'll see. All, all this is doing is, is saying, give me a 9,000 tile loop, right? So tile ID gets one for as long as the map width and height times the overworld map width and the overworld map height. So that's a nine by 10 by a 10 by 10. So that's 9,000 tiles, cool. Then what we do is we'll leave us little notes here. So it's like this scene call starts at one Lou is all indexed at one, so we're gonna say if the scene call is greater than the map width, meaning we're on the next map call. Okay, so it looks like scene call might actually be uh, correct for the insertions, but let's keep walking through. So it's like, you know, this will be every tile for the first scene. It'll be every first row tile for the scene. So, so let's go ahead and say, um, we, we know we need to increment our scene row only when we have inserted a whole row. So once we've globally inserted a whole row, we're going to say the scene row gets itself plus one. So let's, let's walk this through. So, so yeah, this is the, all of the tiles for the first map scene for the first row. So we'll do something 10 times and then we increment the map call to go insert into the next map. We'll say scene rows inserted and we need to calculate how many scene rows have been inserted because if we've inserted a map width amount of scenes, that's when we reset our map call to one. So go back to the first scene, reset our scene call back to one. So we go back to the first item of the second row and then we say our global rows inserted gets one which once our global yeah let, let's see scene row gets scene row plus one yeah because we'd be on the next row and this is this is the thing we were missing um so scene call might be right hey what up katronics dude Hey, dude. Hey, Magnetonics. Get some rest. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate you, dude. Have a good night. Okay. And then if we've inserted a map height amount of map rows, here's where we also need to reset our scene row back to one, just like our column. So this is like the, the next, um, this would be cycle to next map row. You know, this is like every time we've inserted a whole 10 scenes, all 10 rows of all first 10 scenes, then we reset our scene row and scene call. Okay. Now we increment our scene row where we increment it only if, okay, 
and then we 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 increment our scene call where I would think we would increment our scene call every time we insert something. Oh, and we do, right here. Every time we insert something, we go ahead and move that scene call forward, and we only increment the, the scene row if we have inserted a whole global row, is what we're calling it, which is like the 10 scene row once we've inserted only the top row of that 10 scene stretch because it's 9,000 tiles so by the time we get to uh, tile 900 that's when we're incrementing this scene row to go ahead and start the next global rows of stuff um, this might work this might work let's see if we say self no no, no. scene row and scene call. So all this would do is insert a water animation, hopefully wherever we declare a water. Now I actually didn't turn off the initial manual insertion here. So this on 7.3, or no, 7.2. This is what we need to turn off to see if what we did just worked. And it is not updating. So what we did did not work. That's the manual insertion. So I was thinking this could work. Um, and what sucks is we have no way to debug this. So we do, let's, let's check. Yeah, we know we need to reset scene. Oh, this is scene raw, not what? Not scene row. How come that didn't throw an error here? Okay. Well, let's try that. Let's give it, let's reset the scene row back to one. And let's see. Yeah, like zero chance that was working, right? So. <laughs> uh, yeah, we insert into the map row and map call a tiled map tile ID. So this is just literally whatever the tile map ID. Actually, hold on. This is Okay, yeah. The tile ID. Now in the loop, we we yeah, we started at tile ID. So that's how many we're at in the loop. So Okay, so this makes sense. We're inserting just the tile ID into the map row and map call, but then we want to insert into the animatables table for that given map row and map call a anim at the scene row and scene call. So I want to say... Yeah, I want to say if, if we do this, you know, at like 1-1 one, one or whatever, we should have a water at every 1-1. One, one. Is that correct? An animatable water. Oh, it's not even showing up. I would think that this would show up an animatable water, but we're only doing it if the tile ID is a water starter. So let's say, forget that it's an ID of a, t of a water anim starter, and we're just gonna go ahead and put in a one one at every one one put in the water at every one one yeah so that's that's the core of what we're trying to do is all we're trying to do is insert the animation at a given scene row scene call but if we were to say that this is a scene row scene call I would think that we would have a whole screen full of water if we did this right Scene row, scene call. It's nil. What is nil about it? Scene row, scene call gets one. Is it really nil? What? Insert animation. I 
it crashes here on insert animation 19. I don't see why it would crash here. doesn't like our scene row scene call is just jacking up so like I wonder if if we try to give it a hard-coded column does scene row crash no so scene row is working and we give it a hard-coded column see this is always the c okay why is it at the bottom row why is it at the scene row oh the scene row. Where, yeah, where are we inserting scene row? Because we should be able to cycle through one at a time and have access to whatever this local, I call it scene row, scene call. Let's walk through and make sure the scene row, scene call makes sense. Like, uh, if if the scene call is greater than a map width, meaning we've inserted, oh, we have to increment our scene call also, because we aren't incrementing our scene call every tile insert, or yeah, we are. Scene call gets every tile insert. Okay, so that should be right. Let's see, let's see. So I think scene row is what's jacked up. So if we do a hard-coded row of say one, and then we say a scene call of scene call, I think this would give us, hey, official whatnot. Thanks for the first time chat and thank you for the subs today. I appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, you snagged, you snagged one of the last two founder badges for the channel. But hey, thank you. I appreciate you being here. I'm thinking this will do one row of water, uh, but we're crashing. Yeah, we're calculating our scene row and scene call wrong still. Let me see if the tile ID. Let's check if the tile ID. Well, I guess that's not the big problem. The big problem is getting scene row and scene call set up. Because what's what's so tricky about this is this goes from, it's a 9,000 tile ID table, and the scene row, the scene column will go from one to ten to 1 to 10 to 1 to 10 all with the same scene row of 1 and then it'll do that 10 times and then it'll increment the scene row by 1 and then it'll do the same thing where it'd go see, keep the scene row at 1 because we, we only oh wait yeah scene row gets scene row plus 1 okay So yeah, we're doing something 9,000 times, and we're going through, I, I think, I think instead we should, no, we, I guess we just have to know we increment the scene call at the end of every loop. So we'll loop through the scene call, and unless it's bigger than the map width, meaning we've, we've inserted all the top tile for this first scene. It's not until then we're going to reset it back to one. Then we're going to increment our map call so that we're inserting into the next map, top row. We're going to increment our scene rows inserted so that we can count how many times we've inserted a scene row. Because if if we've inserted 10 scene rows, if we've, if we've inserted, yeah, a, a map width amount of scene rows, then we're going to reset the map call back to the first scene 
Okay, which which depends on... This is a little jacked up, I feel like. Map column wouldn't get set... No, it would be. It would be set to 1 because we we start each new row from the very left. So yeah, map call gets 1. We re reset our scene call to 1. That sounds right. We increment how many global rows we've inserted. And then we increment our scene row at this point. So we don't increment our scene row until we've inserted a whole global row is what we're calling it. So the global row would be what I'm calling in the map here. Come on. So if this is our 9,000 tiles, every 10 by 9 is, is a scene or, or an object inside a map row and column. And, this, and so like this is the scene row Scene row one, scene column one, scene column two, scene column three, scene column four, go to scene column ten. We stay at scene row one, scene column one, scene column two, scene column three. And then by the time we get to the end, that's what I'm calling a global rows inserted because we've inserted the first row of this whole table. If you think about this whole thing as, as a row, rows and columns, that global rows inserted right here at the end of that, that's that's what this global rows inserted is. And we increment that if we've inserted a map width amount of scene rows. And then we increment our scene row so that we go to the next scene row. Because we were at scene row one this whole time. Scene row one, scene row, row scene row one for each of these. Then we get here, then we increment to scene row two. Now we do need to reset back to scene row one upon inserting 10 global rows. And if we've inserted 10, you know, a map height of global rows, we do change our scene row back to one. Okay, and then we increment the map row so that we go to one map beneath us. And then we switch to global, global rows inserted because that's how we're triggering how to to uh, reset the map row again. So every time we hit 10 global rows inserted, we reset it back to one, and then we go and insert the next stuff. So I don't see exactly where we're messing up here with the scene row and scene calls. Because we know, we know the map row and map column is right because we're inserting the tile ID from our tiled map into every... Oh, hold on one sec. Because because this... No, this shouldn't matter. Because one thing that's kind of interesting is that the table insert, just like how our global tile map is 9,000 IDs and it's there's no rhyme or reason, it's not... You know, it's just 9,000 items back to back, like an array. And then we go to insert into the map call at the animatables table. We know that's right. So we know that this is just the only wrong thing. So if we put, yeah, if we put scene row, scene call, nothing happens here. Right? Now I'm curious if we crash even. So that that's telling me we're indexing something illegal. Um, so that means we're either not resetting our scene call correctly, or we're incrementing it too. We were incrementing it too far. Now we can put in a hard coded column of let's say three and keep it at the scene row. See, I would think that this would have put... This is jacked up, yeah, because this... The row shouldn't be the last row. It should be... I mean, it should include the last row, but it should go all the way through 
for some reason, we're only inserting the anim into that last most seen row. So if we go, yeah, I mean, if we go scene row minus one, it'll scoot it up. But it should insert it. Since we're doing a table.insert, it should insert more than one animatable function. Now we are cycling through all the functions in the animatables table and going ahead and running it. And this insert anim function is what's actually putting the tile ID of this water, the actual frame of the water, into the row and grid. And this anim spitter object, this water, actually updates over time every frame and spits out the correct frame. So we know the animation's working, we're just putting it in the wrong spot. So how do we fix this? Now, scene row is is only inserting into the last most row. It should be covering every single row for every single three column. It should be doing that, and it's not. Because if we were to say one, it would be at the top. And then if you imagine that we do it yeah, if you imagine we do this like for for every one, two, all the way down to, to nine, it would give us that whole row. But the scene the scene row should be this number that is getting bigger over time. Well, it's so hard to think about because it's going through you know, it doesn't go to the next scene row until it's inserted 900 tiles. So that's what's tricky about it. So like if we if we look at the scene row, we increment it once we've inserted a map width amount of rows. Oh, not, yeah, maybe not this. Not once we've inserted a scene map. Oh, no, no, a map width. Yeah. Yeah, map width is, is 10. It's a 10 by 9. So 10, every time we've inserted 10 scene rows, yeah, we don't want to increment... Or, what is going on? It's hard for me to wrap my head around this because it's... Scene rows inserted plus one. Okay, so once we've inserted 10 of them, we don't want to increment our scene row here. That's for that's for sure. We only want to increment that once we've... This is wrong. Yeah, this is wrong. I think it's right here we want to increment our scene row. No, no, no. Because, now let's see what this map width is. This map width is 10, right? Yeah, map width is 10. Map height is 8. Because there's one row dedicated for the HUD at the bottom. So it's a 10 by 8. But if we've, if we've inserted all 10, yeah, see, we don't want to do this. This shouldn't be... This, I feel like, is, this, this is wrong. If we've inserted, because, yeah, we, we don't want to say global rows inserted plus one here if we've inserted, actually, no, this is right, because this, fuck, okay, because, yeah, scene rows inserted only grows by one once we've inserted a whole scene row. So once we've inserted 10 scene rows, then it's equal to the map width. And this shouldn't be map width, it should be overworld map width. Right? If we've inserted 
yeah, all the rows. Okay, and then we would increment our scene row here. Reset scene rows inserted back to zero because now that global rows was inserted, we need to... Oh my gosh, this is confusing. But now, I mean, I think this overworld map width does make a difference here. Let's see if we put scene row here. Because what we're looking for is a whole, every single scene row at column three should have a water animation. And that is not the case. So why is this messing up? We know map row and map call is right because it's it's You know, I'm kind of curious if 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 anything is different towards the top, towards the top of the screen, I have no idea. Let's just see if there's any more waters inserted here closer to 1 1. There is not. And then the crappy thing is once we try to switch that around and we say, you know what, let's just draw something at every scene call, we crash. So scene call is getting incorrectly incremented. It gets incremented every loop. But every time it's bigger than the whole map, we reset it back to 1. So it should be limited to 1 through 10. Yeah. And then we reset it basically every time we reset anything. Because we start at the first scene. Every scene iteration and every map iteration. And every global map row iteration. Jesus. Okay. So if we've inserted 10 amount of scene rows. Now, okay, yeah, yeah. I was going to check and make sure we started this at zero and we do. Okay. If we... Man, I thought we would I thought I'd be able to figure this out today. I'm not seeing what's wrong. Let's try to let's just redeclare these things and walk through the logic again. We'll call it something different. Let's call it local column. I guess that's not a very good name, but local as in the column of the current scene we're looking in. I guess scene row and scene call, but I, I'm just, I just need a, a refresh, like, because something's not working with my conceptual model of it. So we have a local row, a local column. They both start at one. Now the column needs to iterate 1 through 10 and then loop back through and go 1 through 10 and 1 through 10 and 1 through 10 and it stays at local row 1 until we've inserted all of the first global row basically so uh, we need to increment our local column here 
every time we insert a tile ID. Does the insert anim function work properly with loop variables given? It it should be cut. Well, so I'll show you what um, insert anim does. Insert anim is um, it loops through the given the the scenes um, map row and column animatables table and it executes every function that's stored in the animatables table. So we're executing them here. So for every animatable we've got, we're going ahead and executing them all. And then we're also updating all of these values. So there's another thing, and this is where my, you know, I'm, I'm figuring out how to do this myself. I don't really know how to pull this off, but I have these things like flower, is being updated over time and what flower is is an anim spitter which I know it's a terrible name but an anim spitter is just a, a class that takes in a starting starting tile ID an ending tile ID and a timer threshold and when you update it it just increments the frame if it's if it's past its timer threshold and then it loops it back. So uh, then anim spitter just spits out whatever frame the animation should be on as long as you update it. So we're updating each of those anim spitters and then we're executing the function that is stored in the animatables, which is going into this anim spitter and getting its dot frame, which is the current frame that it should be spitting out. So we're inserting the function itself into the animatables table and we're saying hey at scene one one or at, at the um and this is why it gets confusing too because the what we're looking at on the grid here like every this is a map seven two that's what i'm calling a scene so there's like a map you know a map is a 10 10 by 10 and then every everything every map itself is a scene of 90 tile IDs or 80 tile IDs rather 10 wide 8 down so that's what I'm calling every scene is like what we're currently looking at that's one scene and they're being stored in in every map 2d array so we're trying to insert and this is the two variables here oh and you know what yeah this you're right this is a uh, This almost feels like it's giving your insert anim a reference to your column. So when the variable changes, all instance changes too. Well, I just realized something that the... Well... Well, what's weird... So like, if, if we say 1-1 one, one and put a water frame in there, it'll go and put the animated water at every 1-1. One, one. So that seems to be working, and I'm just kind of talking this through. I'm trying to understand what's going wrong here, because it's like, the thing is, when we insert this, this is in the middle of a 9,000 tile loop. So for any given scene, this should be inserting right now, because we took out we took out the, if, if it's this water anim tile itself, go ahead and add, add the animation. We're saying, go ahead and insert 90 tiles, essentially, over the same spot, one, three, for every scene. And you're saying it feels like you're giving your insert anim a reference to your column, so when the variable changes, all instances change too. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, because I did, as far as I know, as long as, like, it's tricky because we're in the middle of a 9,000 loop inserting the tile IDs, and we're also saying, hey, while we're inserting the tile ID for this given map row and map column, why don't we go ahead and also insert 
this animatable insert anim um, at, at a correct scene. So like ideally we put in scene row and scene column here and and or or we we just changed it to local row and local column ideally like let's just say we you know if we were to reassign local call to 1 and local row to 3 then in the first column and the third row well why is that crushing? Local row, local call, local row, local call. Why would that crash? There's nothing different about hard coding it in like that. This, something might be going wrong. Well, this, oh, this is, well... We define it as local, so we define it as local outside of this for loop. And then, man, I don't get why this would crash it. We should be able to say, does the function need parameters to pass? to the anim function, otherwise it depends on global. See, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking is maybe going wrong here, but it's like, this function is just saying, hey, what I'm about to say is itself a, f a function, um, but not to invoke it, I'm pretty sure. Because if we, if we look at our insert anim class, or let's see. Yeah, insert anim is... Oh, see? Insert anim is a function of insert anim class. Oh, gosh. This is jacked up. So, yeah. Insert anim is a function itself. But we're not invoking it. We're just putting it into the animatable table as a function. And I've, I've done that before where I print up what's in the animatable table. And it is literally a function. And then when we, when we actually invoke it, we invoke it in the scene itself. Um, in the scene update, we go and loop through every animatable in the current map and row, and we execute every... Yeah, if it is local, yeah, you're right, you're right. It can't be local, because yeah, by the time it's invoking it, it's out, outside of this scope. So we might need to just not do local here. And then now that I call it local, that's like, you know what, let me just change that crap. I'll change it back to scene row, because that makes more sense to me. So we'll just say, Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think you are. That would make sense why it's only ever doing like the last most one. Or, well, let's see. Local call. Okay. Okay, we still crash, so we're still doing something wrong here with this. Um, What's weird is the scene row seems fine. Yeah, scene row seems fine, but scene call is jacked up. So if we just say, by the way, let's just overwrite our scene call just to see if it stops crashing and we say, go put our scene call here. Should be it. Column one, it shouldn't crash there. Why is it crashing there? What's the difference of putting now that it's global scene call? 
Okay, what is going on? It's not even liking me to just declare something. So everything in Lua is global unless locally scoped. So calling it scene call right here as one um, globally declares it for everything. Um, this is confusing to me. Why this doesn't crash when we have a one in here, but if we were to say scene call is equal to one, and then put scene call here, it crashes. Map 38, attempt to c compare number with nil. Let's go see what map 38 is. Attempt to compare number with nil. That's what it said, right? Constants work, but variables do not. Well, yeah, I mean, there's no real constants in Lua. It's all just kind of global variables. So, I'm confused why we're crashing here of all places. Let's forget about adding collidable map objects based on tile ID right now. Map 136. Okay, so, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on. It doesn't like, it doesn't like when we do this for whatever reason. Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Why would it work? Why would it? Because it should be evaluated as a number, so why couldn't we just put like if we were to do a local variable here, just called test, and put that right here. It doesn't crash, okay. But if we do a global test, it was crashing. No, it doesn't. Okay, so what, what, what about scene row? This is so weird. What about scene row being manually declared to one here? Or scene call, rather. What did I just do here? Scene call, and then we say scene call, and then that'll crash. Even though it's a one. That crashes. But if we say local scene column, and then we say that this is a local scene column, does that crash? No. So why does it not like the global here? This is so weird to me. Because we're reassigning the global to be a, a valid number and it doesn't like it and it crashes. Why would that ever be the case? When your animator runs, does it have access the global at the place you run it in? It should. Yeah, it should. Um, it should, because if we were to say, like, let's go to another file. I've got another file called constants, and we've got first as a enum for one or whatever so we can say 
why don't we try to insert that enum first into right here and see if it crashes. It doesn't. So it's able to use that global, you know, we're we're passing it into a map from a map declarations file and it's declared in a constants file and it's ran in a in a scene class. So it, it has access to that global, no problem. What the heck is going on? And even when these were local, even when these were local, um, they were storing real numbers. Like, I, they get evaluated. Like, once we pass scene row in as the insert anim first parameter here, we store it as a function. It, it gets stored as a value, not as a variable, I'm pretty sure. I'm not exactly... Not exactly sure. Because if we do... Well, yeah, no, it works. Let's see. Local scene row. And local scene call. And then we're using scene row and keeping that same global first. And it doesn't crash. So it, it, can, it can handle local variables being stored into the function itself because I think by the time it, it gets executed, it knows that this was a one in this function. But let's, let's print out, we can print out, like if we look at what scene we're in, we're in scene seven two. Now scene seven or map seven two is a scene that should have a dot animatables field. And we can just print out the number of animatable functions we should have in there, which should be 90, 80, should be 80. So if we go to where we're printing up, I think it's in our play state. Yeah, if we go here, we should be able to say, go ahead and print the animatables. or scene seven two or whatever. So we're gonna say, go ahead and concatenate with how many animatables are in our map seven two. And I'm assuming this should be 80 because we're inserting it for every single one, but it's going wrong. So it's probably not 80, but this would give us like a tip off of how many functions are actually being stored in this table here, and we need a closing parentheses. And I need to spell print correctly. <laughs> yeah, it's all manual manual debugging stuff. So there is there are 80 functions here. Um there are 80 functions stored in the animatable table. So it looks like we we did pull off our scene row and scene column logic at least somewhat correct because otherwise we wouldn't have exactly 80 in the scene. And then if we were to say okay, well what's actually at the index of the first animatable table, which is a function itself. So we add that debug. See, it says function and it gives us a location. And then if we were to actually, we have this other thing that, that instead of to string, we can inspect what's in there. Um, it should show us what that function is. Oh, it doesn't. It just says it's a function. we inspect what's in there can we say no and we can't access anything in there I don't think but it seems to be working I mean it seems to be storing the functions in there it's just not um, 
we're just not doing the correct values. So like map declarations. Okay. So if instead of inserting an anim, see, and what's so tough is I can't debug these values. I can't debug what scene row and scene column actually is. Um, I, I am kind of curious if we pass, like, let's pass map row in here, and then the animatable should be corresponding to the map row we're in. So this should be on the seventh. Wow, really? What? Why is this happening? Map row is literally just a number. Like if we had... I'm really confused why this would happen. Like if we say test is a global and then we say go to our map row and say that this is a test, it doesn't crash. But why would map row crash? Map Pro should be a number just like these are and like the this the shitty thing is like since this is in a, a loop of nine thousand, if if the map row is incorrect for any of the any of the scenes, it'll it'll cause the whole crash. Like if 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 any of those nine thousand values are in invalid tile for or a, a row or column for this insert animation, it would crash because it needs to have a valid one to insert the animation into. But do but our map row, we know map row and map call is is from one to ten because we're successfully inserting all the tile IDs for each map. If we were to comment that out, we don't oh well. I guess instead of commenting that out, if we were to say go ahead and just insert whatever the tile ID of one is, which is this corner grass piece. We know that's working, so we've got the map row and map column values, but why why would it crash? Why would it crash if we give it... This is very confusing to me. Because we, we can pass other globals into this function and it works fine. So there might be some deeper map row logic that is is that is incorrect. Uh, we start map row and map call at one. We only ins increment the map column if we've inserted 10 objects into the first scene and then we reset map column back to one if we've inserted a whole global row. So what about map row? Yeah, we only increment our map row if we've done a whole 10 amount of global rows. And then we increment, yeah, dude, I don't see what's wrong. I don't see what's wrong. This is very strange behavior to me because we've proved, can you create the instance of the anim right there and then insert it directly? It doesn't quite work like that because we're only rendering um, the, the, the game one scene at a time. We only render the current scene you're on. So if we were to insert, insert it directly, um, the, the, to the delayed function initialization. Um, it's, it's, I, I guess I'm, so like, 
it's n- I, is what you're calling initialization right here where we put it in the animatables table that where you're calling initialization um let's see not there so is what you're like I kind of call this I would call this part like the it's not evaluated until later well that's the weird thing is I think it's evaluated right here but it's not um, invoked is is that what you're saying like evaluated because I think I think what's happening, if we could look under the hood, I think it's storing a function with the value of what first is under the hood. So it's like technically evaluating it here once it puts it into this animatable table, but it doesn't actually use that value until it's called, until it's invoked with the parentheses, which we don't do until the the scene. Yeah. Because what's really strange is that it's, you know, it, it's, if we hard code in the insert anims here, like first and second, we get a, a first row, first row, second column, and it's working. And, it, and it's putting it in every, every scene row. So it's like that this way of storing the functions is working because every single map row has this animatable. Because if we were to look at how this is rendering, it's rendering per map. Can you assign the value to a local variable in the function and use that as the parameter to animate? Let's see. So you're saying like this is a local of whatever local uh, like we would say local well see this is this gets weird because in the function we might be able to say local map row or, or we have to come up with something else we just call it row local row gets whatever the map row is of the global and then we say we pass the map we pass in the row here and see if that crashes instead that's still, uh, still crash, dude. I'm I'm so confused with this. I'm so confused. Well, why would we crash? Look, if if we say, hey, local row is just a value of one, we would still crash. Oh, we don't. What the? So something with our. It's got to be our scene row. Um. Yeah, because if we were to put local column or map column I think this wouldn't crash even though we're naming it the wrong thing ignore that but this okay that crashes too what the flip because what's really weird is we can put in the scene row and have it not crash that's the really really weird thing we could put in the scene row and it doesn't crash and the scene row is just like all this other stuff where it's well we were tweaking this but even as a local variable scene row works and doesn't crash it's so weird I'm like fundamentally missing something about this but what's So the scene row, it was always one or, or yeah, it was, it was perpetually one, which is incorrect. It shouldn't be perpetually one. It should, it should get incremented here where we say, uh, well, we're not actually incrementing it anywhere. Where did we take that out? We should increment the scene row once we've inserted a whole global row. So we'd say, okay, scene row gets scene row plus one here. 
and then we have to reset scene row to one once we've cycled through to the next map. So we would go scene row gets one here. Okay, and then if we put in, let's see if this crashes, scene, scene row, scene call. Yeah, it doesn't. Now, if we were to put just a number and keep scene row, it doesn't crash. So scene call is not the one making us crash. Or scene row, scene row is fine, scene call is not. Which maybe, do we have to increment the scene call first? No, because we start at one with scene call, yeah. Let me just take this out. So scene row doesn't crash us, but it does put it, scene row shouldn't only put stuff in the bottom eighth row. It shouldn't, it should put an animatable for every row. Um, so that's weird, but then if we were to put scene call in here, we crash. This is so strange. I don't get it. I don't get it. Because if we were to put any other thing... Yeah. What did I just do? We don't crash if we put in a value here. That seems better than, I feel like it used to be crashing here. And then it put, okay. So then if this was two, it should be the next column. Yeah, but we should, we should have a whole row of these things or a whole column of these things stacked because every row should have one. So something with scene row is not getting populated right. I don't see what's wrong because I thought we th we thought this through like we only you know our scene column gets incremented every frame or every loop and then once we've inserted 10 of them then we reset it back to one. We keep our scene row at one until we've inserted a whole global row of this stuff. Let's add a scene call minus equals one after the loop ends just to debug. So just decrement it after the loop ends. Or, or at, at the end here, scene call minus equals here. And add scene call back into your anim. Yeah, okay. Oh, and see what's so weird is like, God damn it, since we're in the middle of the 9,000 loop, it's really hard to debug anything here. Yeah, that, we crash. We crash because scene call starts at one and then we're decrementing it to zero and then we're trying to insert zero into anywhere. What the flip? And let's see 
what the thing we crash on is just like only the first of many things. Oh, after the loop ends. I don't see what that would do. We just decrement it here. Because it's crashing. Keep the loop the same, but make sure scene call is valid when the loop exists. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do that. Make sure the scene call is valid. That's what's so tough is that it's all in this black box of a, of a 9,000 loop here. And we can't really see which one's what. Because the scene row is jacked up too. Because if we do anything outside the loop, it's still, it's still going to crash here because what we gave it into the insert enum. I guess we could, we could add, we could add, um, You're saying set it to one outside the loop just to see or whatever. Uh, dude, what the heck? <laughs> what is going on? Why did that work? Oh, we have to reset it back to one. No, I still don't get it. I don't get why. I don't get why that would change it. I mean, it's still. Let's see if we're putting. Let's put the number of animatables. It should still be the same number. It's evaluating the variables outside that loop. I'm not getting that. I don't get why. So you're saying if we change this one to be a different column it should be the third column instead of the first one what the fuck <laughs> what okay okay so how would we fix this we need it local like you were saying like we store the local value into the function so that is that is wild to me. I did not think that was that would change anything. Okay. So yeah, you, so I was so I was wrong in thinking that it stored the value once we declare it and store it in this table. It doesn't do that. It's once it's invoked that it's actually pulling that global and it's at that point in time that it's the wrong value and that's why they're all at the same location so like you were saying where like you were saying like why don't we declare a, a, a local variable in this function and call it you know local testing gets what the map row actually was and we're inserting the local variable here so that it's not this global that gets evaluated outside the loop like you're saying we crash there um and that's because what map row is wrong if we were to put map call see this is so backwards because yeah it's the same problem where Yeah, I think you are right about that. Might need to make multi-line 
Maybe, maybe. This is weird. So if we put the row, fifth row, it does, changing it here does give us the correct, well, a different layer here or a different row, but it, it, we, we get screwed when we try to put the value of map row into there which I don't get why because we're putting or we're putting like, yeah like if we were to say that this local variable now gets map row instead of scene row let's just see fuck cause it's yeah it's because it's asynchronous or whatever How do we put, how do we just say, give us the variable, give us the value, the current value of the global now? How do we say that? Like, give us whatever the current global value is. Well, yeah, exactly. It is asynchronous. And that's why the global variables are screwing it up, is because we need the variables as they are in the loop and not... I mean, yeah, would it... Why wouldn't... I mean, I first had these as local, but that, that was still screwing up. Because, like, why can't we put a local variable in there, and then it knows what... That is so weird. So if that's local and then we say local testing gets map pro and we put that in, still still in global scope. This is hard for me to wrap my head around. Cause yeah, we, we, we want, how come we can't pass? This is weird. I, I, I kind of want to say, let's, let's just test not inserting them here but let's go into a new loop and just try to do something where we say for i gets one comma five do an insert into let's just do the current map row which is a seven two and we'll say are we able to put in I here and have it give us three rows. Yeah, we are. Or five rows. And it's only in that map. So this works for inserting more than one. So We might have to just pull this out and we just don't do this while we're while we're assigning all the global maps. Like maybe we just pull this out and we do it separate and we say, okay, we're gonna cycle through every map now and if the tile ID is equal to a starting anim, then go ahead and insert Oh, shit. I mean, the, the problem still is... Like, what's the difference... What I don't get is, what's the difference of giving it a variable here? We're giving it an I here, and that changes over time. But this I is... Yeah, I, I'm just misunderstanding... 
I'm misunderstanding the the scope in Lua altogether. Like I was, I thought that everything was global, but then if you were to do a, a for loop like this, I isn't global because you can do a, another for loop of of I and have it not. Well, no, I guess it would just overwrite. Shit, man, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this means for us pulling this off. Because if we if we were to say. A different scene column. Yeah, we're able to get two rows. So it's like, this is what's so weird. Is like, I would be global, right? Or or not global? It's stored. It's stored into the anim function for the animatable at one value. One through five. One through five. Well. Let's try to do this like a different, starting at five to eight. Yeah, that one works. Why can we do that and not do what we're trying to do? I must have screwed something serious, well, I don't see what I screwed up because I made everything, um, I tried making it local and I tried making it global and it was jacked in both. But here it seems to be working appropriately. So maybe just what we have to do, maybe what we have to do is just, well, see, and that's, that's my confusion is like, I thought by default, every variable is global because that's how we were able to draw at the first location here when we when we did this and we said draw this at first that's global we didn't declare it global that's in a whole nother file and it's just a declared variable i just it it was all caps by my convention but not by any like lua convention well, and now I'm not seeing it. Oh, there. There it is. It was under one of them. So, like, we're able to use it there, and we didn't declare that global. Initialize i to zero. See, so that's... Um, everything in Lua is, in, is one indexed. So if we were to say, what, local, or just say i gets zero, and then... Would we just do I here? Oh, it doesn't like that. It needs a it needs an initialization for the for loop. But if we say I get zero, it's not gonna like that. Yeah. Try to initialize i to zero before the for loops. Yeah, it, I don't think um, it, Lua is. That's the weird things. Like, like as far as I was concerned, the weird things about Lua was everything's global, and everything's essentially just a table. And um, the last weird thing is that things are one indexed, not zero indexed. It's so weird that I'm more confused after this stream than when I started. I thought I had a good idea of what to do. But I, I think I think the issue is, for whatever reason, when we're trying to insert animatables inside this huge 9000 loop, it's it's getting jacked up. So I think I think we worry about first just getting the right tile IDs, and then we'll go through and we'll cycle through 
all the tile IDs and, and try to do it separate and try to insert. We would have an easier time. I mean, yeah, let's try it right now. Let's just... It's like we're not using the scene call and scene row anymore other than to count to the loops so that we know when to increment the map row and stuff for that. But if once we have it, then we can say for uh, for I gets one for as long as we want to go through the map, the overworld map height. And then we want to go through the overworld map width. And then we want to check each tile ID. So we have to do another nested for loop where we say for I gets. And, and we have to do the nested. Well, it's tough because it, there's, there's 80 tile IDs in every map. So like the thing we're currently in right now has 80 tile IDs. But we can't just do for I gets one for for 80 because we need to know which row and column to insert the animation at. So it's almost like we could just do for the, you know, for a map row, map for a map height amount of things. Do Missing there for oh we got for I for I for J for K why is it hating this comma no we got a comma why why is it hating this This is like so, so manual, it's kind of crazy. Okay, so at this point, we should have a reference. K, K is our column, our local, or our scene column. Careful with the two for loops, scene call is now invalid. Yeah, we're not using scene call uh, anymore. Scene call is only used in the data downloader to worry about when to increment the rows and stuff. But we're going to do it. Um, we're going to make new stuff here, I want to say. Or, like, w w what we want to do is go through every tile, and we want to say if if the uh, map at this overworld map height and or, or I map at i j if that maps um, tile id which it would be an index of shit yeah we only have it with we only have it as an 80 oh shit yeah okay yeah we have to kind of do it like this, where we say, so now, now anything at K will be the tile ID we're trying to insert, but we still have to figure out which row and column that belongs to, which we can do based on the index number, based on the yeah, based on the K. If K is 10, we know it's row 1, column 10. If it's 11, we know it's row 2, column 1. We'd have to say that somewhere, but but let's let's see if we can say that map at i j at index K if that tile ID is equal to the starter 
what I call it, starter, water, water starter, water anim starter. If it's if it's equal to that value, then we want to go insert an anim right there. If if that map or if that tile ID is equal to that water anim starter, then we're gonna do this old thing we did, which is. Which is go into the IJ animatables table. And I'm gonna just delete these, or I don't know. It was interesting to see how wrong I was about some of that stuff. Okay, so we're going into that maps.animatable table, and we're table.inserting a function where we're putting it in let's just for right now let's just put it um, at, at 1 1 just to see well because the thing is we need to convert this K into a row and a column Yeah, Ktronics. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, I believe... Well, and the weird thing is... Yeah, I mean, maybe that was my misunderstanding, is that if they're nested in something, they're local, but... but I, I thought everything in Lua was global unless declared local, so I need to do some reading about that. Because, yeah, ideally we pull... And this is this is always the hardest part of coding for me to kind of like conceptualize like, you know, if K, I don't like to hard code this. I know there's a there's a way to say, you know, like like if if K is 11, we need our our map row to be two, no, our map row to be one and our map column to be two. But how do we say that? How do we say? How do we get a f yeah I mean I don't like I don't like the idea of manually coding a like an if yeah I, I, it's something to do with mod right I, modulo I just am not smart enough like we need to set we would set um, uh, we can't use the same, or, yeah, let's say, um, we'll call it anim row, and we'll get anim column, and we need to set it equal to a number that is, if it is, you know, if, if it's less than 10, it's just one, if it's a multiple of 10 we need it to be whatever that multiple is this is the th yeah this is what it's hard for me to imagine so it's like modulo is the remainder of a division right so we can say okay well we're going to divide k by 10 or or we're going to we're going to mod k by 10 and That's not the row. We we need it. So if K is one, then K mod ten would just be one. It's not till it's eleven that K. Yeah, that that's still not right. We would need to. It needs to be one for every first 10, two for every second 10, three for the next three 10. Gosh, I might ask ChatGBT how to do this. I'm too dummy. 
It's like I'm, I'm smart enough to know I need to use mod, but like not smart enough how to pull it off. Gosh, I don't even know what to even say this thing. Just mod 10 would work. Or like, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell ChatGBT we've got values like, which is one through 80. If K is one, through 10 we need nm row to be 1 and every next 10 values nm row needs to be incremented how do we do this with the mod operator? Okay. Is where they didn't use mod at all here. Because, yeah, we're not... Divide by 10 to get the scene. Well, we're in the scene. We've got a table of 80. That's These K values are all the 80. <laughs> and Ktronics, it's above my pay grade. It is above my pay grade. This is looking kind of right, because it's like... If, if K is 1... Or, or let's, let's walk through if, if K is 11 then we're doing 11 minus one, which is 10, and then 10 hard. This divide divide, is this what modulo is in, in Lua? No, okay, so divide divide is just division, I think. So 11 divided by 11, or no, no, 10 divided by 11. See, oh, that's jacked up. This is not wrong. This is not right. Yeah, this is already jacked. Because we want, we do want, oh, yeah, you're right. Let's see, in Lua. This, it did misunderstand me though, like. Cause let's walk it through if, if cause we know if, if K is 11, we need it, we need the row to be two. So if K is 11, 11 minus 1 is 10, 10 divided by 10 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's walk it through for 21, 21 minus 1 is 20 divided by 10 is 2 plus, yeah, okay. So that might be, that might be right. then we need the column to be the mod 10, I think. Because that needs to go through 10 over and over and over and over again. So that, that one would be K mod 10. I think that's right. And then we can insert nm row. call 
Okay, let's let's try that. So we are only doing that if it's a water anim starter, which this scene does have. Oh my god. Is that it? Let's try to shift it and make sure we're not like accidentally inserting it somewhere else. Let's just shift the row up by two and the column left by one and just make sure that's working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, so now we are inserting those animatables. So now the question is, if we turn off all of our insert anims here, for at least not for flowers but for water if we turn them all off here for water then anytime we draw a water starting anim in our tile map we should have water so we have water here animating and we have water here animating i think that's it um we're we're still manually inserting the flowers which we can do as easily as we did this water. So all we have to do is, where are we? Yeah, so this would be, I guess, I mean, it's kind of gross. We have to do so many loops, but um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that that was so confusing to me that we weren't able to pull it off with the scene call and scene row because essentially we're just doing the same thing I mean like you look at the line of code we're doing the same thing um, it, except we're manually calculating the the anim row and call whereas we were manually keeping track of it in this main loop or whatever you're saying I don't get why it's borked I don't get it and I don't because I, I guess I don't like the fact that we're checking every single tile if it's a water anim starter. Move the locals outside of the if map. Move the locals outside of the if map and reuse for flowers and others. Yeah, that's the right move. That's what I, that's what was rubbing me the wrong way. That's a good call. That's exactly right. Because, yeah, we don't want to declare that and calculate it for each one. That's what I wasn't liking. But now we can say, hey, if the map's an anim starter, water anim starter, go ahead and add the water frame. But if it's a flower anim starter, go ahead and add the uh, flower frame. Now we do have two sets of flowers, but I, I am thinking that we're gonna do this differently. By the time we have other maps, by, by the time we get our other layers in here, well, let's see if this works first. Let's see what our flower anim starter is declared as, and I don't know if we do have it declared. Yeah, we don't. We will put in a flower Anim starter, and we can check our handy dandy export for which number this is. We've got a little Python script that puts the number that it's supposed to be. Graphics tiles numbered. Let's look for the water starter here, or not the water starter, the flower starter right here. So flower starter is ten twelve. Ten twelve, and then autumn flower starter autumn. Now I do think we're gonna get rid of this autumn flower starter, and I'll explain why. If this works, let's see. Autumn is ten ten oh eight. Now, if it is a, I mean, we could do it in an else if, but it's whatever. Flower. Uh, 
we should do it in a in an else if flower autumn starter then go ahead and insert now we do have if we check out our insert anims insert anims the the names are borked <laughs> that that's my fault i mean insert anim class uh or maybe it's got you know it, it's the insert animations class insert insert anims is the function but we want the class right here autumn flowers yeah so we do have an autumn flowers there okay we, um so it's an anim spitter god damn it anim spitter there we go so there's the anim spitter 1008 okay yeah now it's called autumn flowers that is the anim spitter object right where it was in yeah okay Okay, and then we'll, we'll add these in an else if because one, any frame can only be one of these things and we don't have to check. We don't have to check. It, you know, if, if, if it's a water anim, we don't have to check if it's a flower. We know it's a water anim already. So we can add them in an else if and then we'll see, well, we have to manually take out all the manual insertions of our flowers and our autumn flowers. So we'll go and delete these, or get rid of them. Okay, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Look at that, our flowers are updating, and our flowers are updating, and our autumn flowers are not updating. We either messed up the number, autumn flowers starts at 10.08, or we messed up autumn flowers with an S at the end when we went to insert it autumn flowers dot frame. No, that's right. Autumn underscore flowers dot frame. So why is autumn flowers only one not working? Autumn flowers. And I'm spitting. so close flower flower autumn anim starter is that right flower autumn anim starter 1008 flower autumn anim starter that's just where is constance flower oh flower autumn anim starter flower autumn flower starter Autumn flower starter. Why do I call it weird ass shit? Autumn flower. Uh, <laughs> Autumn flower. Move to. Okay. Micro optimizations are good, but not time critical. Yeah. Keeps it cleaner. Yeah, dude. Uh, what? Uh, I know that 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 bugs me too. That it didn't error out when I did I, where I tried to insert a a variable that they had no idea what it was equal to. Like, cause that wasn't declared anywhere. So, like, yeah, autumn flower anim starter. Yeah, I agree. Keep it consistent. Autumn flower anim starter. I we got to I mean, I don't know what to, I don't know what the better. I'm open to better name suggestion name conventions than that. But like, you know, like I call it anim starter because that's, it's like the starting animation frame, but autumn flower anim starter. Now our autumn flower anims should be animated when we walk down here. Yes, they are. Cool. Yeah, it bugs me that that didn't error out. It bugs me because we'll error out over the stupidest shit, but if we try to check value against something that was never declared it's fine it's like oh yeah whatever i know I, I i know that's jacked up but that's huge okay so what i was saying with 
what I was saying with the um, we might get rid of autumn flower anim starter because what we are trying to do is is export all of our tiles as different layers so we've only got the ground layer right now but I'm hoping to to kind of do different passes where um, this is the like this is a pass where we're inserting all the animations but I'm hoping to insert a pass where we would also check be like hey is this equal to um, well what I'm trying to explain is like we've got collidable map objects right that we can't walk into and right now we were we're inserting them based on the tile ID but I'm thinking <laughs> yeah dude you would ace the book report tomorrow in class you'd be like listen zero indexing is not real in Lua <laughs> naming conventions matter it's messy but I mean hey I you know Lua's Lua's I love Lua because I I'm able to make stuff with it right so like it's definitely got its aches and pains but the fact that we're making a game with it is just so cool so like right now we're drawing these collidable map objects based on the tile ID which does work and we can keep it that way um but yeah, I mean, I, why would we change it at this point? Um, but we do need a separate... I want... Uh, it's tough because, like, if we're walking in the cabin here, we would want a sprite to render on top of our character, which right now isn't possible with the the tile IDs in our map because... Our, our render order layer it goes render the map in the in the in the scene it actually renders it actually just renders the map and then it renders our scene which is a reference to all the entities in the current map as well as our player is in the scene so it renders the map then it renders the player so if if we put if we put any sprite in the um we put any sprite in the map as a tile id it will never render over tashio so i do want to figure out we need to we need to be able to add in another layer here and we can we would add in you know we would add in a new layer and it would be called top level tiles or whatever and then we cycle through and if it's not a zero then we need to overwrite um well we would need to yeah, we, we would have to have another table of any tiles that need to be rendered on top of the player. And we would get that by exporting a second layer here. And then... And then rendering it after our player. So we'd render... It would be rendered in our scene after our player. As opposed to rendered first in the map. Um... So yeah, that I don't know if that's going to be next, but uh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked that we can animate the water manually now cuz like what that means is like hey, you know what? How about all this is is water? Well, let's let's leave it one. We'll say, "You know what? All this is water." Boom, that's all water. Come on. <laughs> really? Oh, this thing water we get water here we go and export as um one for a floor and then the top tile yeah exactly so like yeah i i think i'm calling it ground ground and then top level which i guess is what i'm calling everything that goes over the player um but if we export this global map and then we run our game and then we go left all the water's animating 
and we didn't have to manually insert a single one, and it knows we can't walk into it because the collidable because the tile ID is is in the range of collidable map IDs. So that's huge that we don't have to worry about that crap. Because then we could be like, you know what? I actually want all the flowers and we can see them in motion without having to insert all that crap. We, as long as we click the first one, right? Because the first one is the, is the anim starter. So as long as we, what the, oh, we need to deselect. Yeah, as long as we select the first one and I will check your comment whatnot I will, I'll check that comment in in um, YouTube so thank you for that I appreciate that did you find me on YouTube by the way like how did you how did you find this channel because so check this out Katron we just we just drew those flowers right and we drew the water we export it as a global map all we do is export and then we just run our game and it animates them for us right there well mother what the I was thinking it was going to work perfectly what are you mad at insert anima nil value I might have drawn the wrong starter no let's try to not draw the autumn flowers and see if that fixes our issue we didn't crash on the other page where we drew the autumn flowers, so that's a little weird to me. Okay, come on, dude, what? <sighs> I really thought that was gonna work. I really thought it was gonna work. We'll try that it shouldn't matter like it because if we walk around the corner it, it would just move our position it shouldn't crash like that um there was there was a grid of flowers right here we'll we'll add in and that yeah that should be the the starter too so export as global map and then we'll try to run What the f Okay, let me try. This is weird. This sh I did not think this was going to do this to me. So, what not were did did YouTube just recommend my video to you at some point? Like just in your suggested or whatever? Cuz I didn't, you know, I've been uploading for like, I've been uploading for, I don't know, like a year and a half or two years, and I didn't hit a hundred subscribers until last week, and then this past week I've gotten 40 subscribers. So like, I'm trying to figure out what happened with YouTube where it, it is starting to just recommend my channel more or something, so I'm kind of curious. Okay, <laughs> we can render no anima animatables fine. Dude, what's crashing it then? What was crashing it? Yeah, I know, finally, like, getting some traction is, is crazy. I mean, I do like, I. I'm normally talking to the void like I I didn't stream until after 300 episodes of, of recording myself so I just treated the the channel as if I was streaming and I just talked as if people were watching and then after X amount of episodes I just started getting the confidence to maybe just try to stream okay if we draw one flower here does that crash us Yes. Insert animation and nil value. So it might be because we're on, on. Uh, 
Why? The only thing I could think of is that it's it's at the... If we look at the global map, it's, it's at the leftmost index here. Like, this is like... Uh, but why... F no, why? Because flowers... Or water was working. Why would not flowers work? I'm confused. Yeah, I... <laughs> after... Yeah, I... That's what I kind of, like... Figured. I mean, luckily my stream hasn't been crapping out today. It's been this whole week. It's been kind of crapping out. But luckily today was good. What is going on? Insert anim. Map declarations eighty. Why would flowers work on every frame but this one? It shouldn't matter. This should all be right. This was working for water. Why would not work on flowers? This is driving me crazy. I thought we were done. I thought we were going to wrap up and be done. I mean, we were wrapped up. What? Flowers are there? Fine. Flower, autumn flowers are there? Are fine, too. So what? I'm going to try to just draw it on a completely different... Like, unless, unless I drew the wrong anim starter, well, even then, it should just not insert the anim function there. Yeah, I don't know, because it, it, it inserts the water fine. Water doesn't make it crash. Let's see if we add in flowers onto this second scene. If we add in flowers over here if it adds, if it crashes there. What the heck? It adds flowers there, they're fine. Yeah, I mean, we, we already kind of proved that, but why would it crash? Like, why would, why would, we'd be able to put water here no problem, but not flowers. That's what I'm really confused about. We've got our starter 1012 and 1008, and we could just put in the actual starter here. Flower, anim starter, autumn flower, anim starter. Add a single flower after removing the water. Yeah, let's do it. What we'll do is we'll export it just like here to prove it doesn't crash with just just grass. And then we'll then we'll put the one flower in. It's like <laughs> just put one flower. It's like you're like decorating like the cake or like a Michelin star restaurant and you're like putting like that last dab of like perfection on top. That's us putting this flower in. Like, you know what? Right there. Yeah, the parsley. Oh, we missed a pixel on this frame one. We missed a pixel of dark green. Okay, so it's just working now. Let's see. If we put in a shit ton of flour. Yeah, I, 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 I'm assuming it's because we have a, a different... 
Well, no, because we have animated water and a flower here. Let's try, yeah, water. Let's just try to put one water with a flower. Anywhere like that. This is so cool that the animations are inserting like this. We're done. We're done with the game. We're done. In a good way. It's not broke. It was never broke. Don't say it was broke. Really though, why was it broke? Why why did why did doing this and then doing this break it? The most frustrating thing in programming is not being able to recreate your problem. But not next to the far left edge. Well, I mean, at this point, let's try to get it to crash again and see what why it did crash. Because I don't think the it should have anything to do with the far left edge. Like, we should be able to put water all there if we wanted to. <laughs> See, yeah, you guys are you guys are in the mind of a the, of a cook now. Well, why the fuck? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll add autumn flowers. Autumn flowers, okay, John. Yeah, we'll do autumn flowers. Get it? That's the parsley that you're talking about. I just had. Uh, any other yeah let's try autumn flower this is what i thought well let's see because maybe it was a combination of three no it it was never broke you know i i thought about that but i i made sure to click the first one i mean maybe I, maybe i did just screw it up but it's working I must have done that. I must have accidentally clicked the wrong starter anim in then. But that shouldn't crash it. That shouldn't that shouldn't crash it. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't like when the whole thing is full. Oh, shoot. Stream crash. I think that's the universe saying we should wrap it up. But why is it crashing here? So I don't know if you saw that. It was like right during the stream crash. It it did crash when we tried to do flowers everywhere. We shouldn't we don't have a finite number of animatable objects. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, let's let's see if we can do just a whole water If we can just do a whole thing of water, and it shouldn't matter that it covers where we are, it, it would just move us. It, it shouldn't matter that we do this. Like, that wouldn't crash the game. Because I've done that. I've had unwalkable or map collidable objects on the other side. Yeah, it's got to be there. It's got to be something with that, the, the number of animatables we, we can insert or execute. Now, we are doing... If we look at where we're executing that, we're going... Sorry, it's hard to see with that back there. What? Oh, that was tiled, okay. If we look at where we're doing this, can you do the same test? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that same test on a not map edge. Yeah, let's just do right here. 
water is this whole scene right here. One more. And this is it. Yeah. If we look at where we're actually inserting, or, you know, we, we've seen where we insert the function, but we haven't seen recently where we execute the function, which is at our insert nm. That's where we insert it, but then where we, oh, animatables, that's what it is called. So this is the only thing I can think that might be causing it is like index null on a map edge. Oh. Cuz yeah, it shouldn't be 0, it should be 1 on a map edge like on on the right here. Well, K mod. So you're saying like the the leftmost edge? No, the leftmost edge isn't. What the fuck? What what part are you saying to comment out to try? Because what's weird is we did we did have a successful when we had when we had water all on this left edge it still worked okay the animator loop that's where we're executing the um, the function to update it so if we look in our scene, we're actually invoking the function there at, where is it? Right there in the insert animation class. So you're saying comment this out. So the, what that would do is stop, stop updating the animated tile so like they're not animating right now but if this crashes you're saying it like test if this crashes when we draw it all doesn't crash so yeah it is something to do with that it's trying to index a nil value here for the animatables. It must be something to do with the length operator, no? Why would it be crashing at a certain amount of animatables? Yeah, I mean, maybe we can say, <laughs> this is so stupid, but if i is equal to zero, then i is one just to try to catch it. Oh, and then we want to turn it back on and just see. Yeah, no, still, still dumps. Hey, Basie. Hey, welcome in. Uh, yeah, we, we were like, we were on cloud nine because we fixed a bunch of stuff. It would not be zero, whatnot. If it would be zero, not be I. Um, I don't see what you're talking about. Because we're we're invoking the animatables functions here by I, so we were trying to catch that zero index error. 
by assigning it to one if if I was zero. It would not be I, it would be the map row or map column. Yeah, I'm not sure. So like, the thing that is zero, oh, so you're saying, oh, that the map row or map column, do a plus one to the mod, yeah, we'll check that out, we'll try that. Let's go back to our map declarations. I just have to make sure I commit and push before 1150 so we get the green dot for today. Um, so you're saying over here to the mod one, okay, mod 10, plus one right there that did offset that offset this one at least it didn't crash these animatables which is nice but it is moving them see how like that one gets offset dude what's happening here So, so you're saying we should catch any zero. It's like we leave this off, but we say if that, oh no, we would need something like this. Well, but it's inserting in the right place. It's just crashing if, if what? Is it the top row? Yeah, I, oh, I think you're right about that. I think you're right about the parentheses. Let's see. Well, it's still off. See how this one, this one doesn't have the, this is weird. Look at the, the column here. This first column isn't animating, but if we go to this one, this first column is animating. Because what's weird is that's, that's adding it to the correct spot. But maybe we catch, or maybe in the insert animation class. Are you saying here we try to catch the map row? Dude, I don't, yeah, I don't get what's, what's going on. So let's remove the edge water. Yeah, and that, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if that will stop it crashing. I don't know if it's a, a number amount of animatables that's causing it to crash or what. I just noticed something. Well, I think I just noticed something. Uh, let's go up and then to the left. Shit. Why is that one crashing? <laughs> if it, maybe it's in the bottom row. If it's in the bottom row, it's crashing. Let's see. We'll take the water out of the bottom row. Okay. Okay, so let's take let's take it out of the bottom row on here and see if that fixes the crash anything's in the bottom row no okay I I don't know yeah it looks like we're inserting it into the wrong tile I agree but why why are the other ones right maybe the first row furthest right so like the very bottom and the very right most one so we'll try to do that we'll clear out that it 
See, but what's weird is it's it's inserting the correct values here on this scene, but when the map is... Okay, so can we do... So does it crash if anything is in any left column? Like leftmost column? Or... Or, no, no, no. If, if anything's in the bottom row or the rightmost column, does it crash? It's like we can put one here just in the bottom right and see. Yeah, it's just that bottom, that bottom column, or and the rightmost column. Let's test it. If we put it, we put one water right here. It should be okay. Yeah. Okay, that's weird very particular crashes, but it's like, maybe our insert anim, I don't know what could be causing this. We're cycling through all the animatables. So what about, what about the map row? Why would our self map row be incorrect here? Cause like if we were to say if we were to say, hey, if, if our map row, if our self.map row is equal to this bottom row, which is 8, then go ahead and just subtract 1 and set it equal to 7. Would that fix the crash for everything drawn on the bottom row? No. Okay, I, I don't know what's going on. Oh, we, we did draw it. Well, that was my bad. We shouldn't have drawn it in the rightmost column. Yeah, we'll just draw it on the bottom, and if it, if it stops crashing now that it's in the bottom, that gives us a hint of where to look. But I've got to drive to Santa Fe in the morning work very early so I'm gonna have to end stream here but that's th that's working that's stopping it from crashing so we just need to figure out how to do that why why is the map why is the self map row being incorrect here um, that's really weird because if we if we uncomment that out why can't it insert an animatable into oh well no what the f what is going on so the bottom row is fine plus one on the division let's try it yeah we've got we divide by one and we plus one Let's remove the plus one. Let's see. Uh, well, we need... Oh, yeah. Well, still crashes and it's drawn at the wrong index. This is weird because it's, it's, it's not the animated row and column that's wrong. It's the self-map row that's wrong. Well, no, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But that's fine. It's it's not fine if we do it in the rightmost column. Oh crap, we gotta commit before we lose our we gotta commit. We gotta commit. <laughs> We're about to lose our, our green streak. Try to beat the clock for, for the twelve. So yeah, in our, in our repo here, 
well actually not even in our repo but just in my in my github you get a green dot for all these commits so if we if we would have waited till past midnight we wouldn't have got a green dot for today so that's why I kind of just hauled ass and committed. I should have checked at what the hell we committed, but I, I didn't want to miss the green dot. We got we got it. Okay, I'll, I'll dig I'll dig into this tomorrow after work. I had like a 14-hour day at work today, and I've got another long day tomorrow. So, um, this is huge though. We got animatables inserting. There's one little bug with it. It crashes some sometimes but for the most part we draw flowers and flowers are there animated we draw water water's there animated we just have to get that cruft out but yeah i'm gonna see if any homies are streaming game dev at the moment uh it doesn't look like it i'm gonna check out one of these recommended streamers to just kick off a little raid here and then call it a night Most software game dev um, channels I find aren't actually doing game dev at the moment. They're like... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe... Maybe we won't raid. Hey, whatnot, that is great to hear. I am trying to break into the programming industry. It's been a crazy transition. I come from the film industry, so this is totally different than what I normally do. But, you know, I can use, I love, I love game dev because I can do a little bit of everything like I would do in the film world. I loved cameras and I loved acting and I loved editing and I loved color grading and special effects and I did like a little bit of everything. So with game dev, it's kind of like I get to do a little bit of everything. Get to do the, the logic, get to do the programming, the uh, art, the music. I chose Lua because there's a Harvard CS50 course that has um, game dev courses starting in Love 2D and Lua. So my first couple projects in game dev were in Lua because of that, and we made we made Pong, and then we made. Flappy Bird, and then once we made Flappy Bird, I stopped watching the videos and I started just working on my own projects. And I I didn't create this game, but I recreated this game. Um, Joust. So this was my last game I made. So this is this is in Love 2D and Lua, and I recreated the 1982 arcade game Joust. So this was my last project. And this is this is like maybe 150 or 200 episodes on my YouTube channel of, of the progress of this channel. And then, and it looks like we crashed. All right, well, your CS course, you wrote the interpreter that ran itself and it was Lua? It literally was Lua? Or was it like a Lua-like thing? So if if you want to play, um, you can. There is on the Git repo, if you go to Joust and you go to Releases, I made a Linux build, Mac build, and Windows build right there on the GitHub. So finding focus github.com finding focus slash joust and then you can go to the release pages and you can you can play them fairly easily from right there but i gotta get going i've got work in the morning and another long day so thanks everyone for watching and participating that was super fun i was thinking i was going to program for 20 minutes but whatnot and katron kept me kept me stoked for for making progress so thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. We'll get some more stuff done. We'll try to track down this bug. I'll probably stare at it during work tomorrow and try to try to uh, figure it out. But thanks, thanks, dudes. I'll catch y'all later. Catch you tomorrow. I might raid out. 
uh, to somebody 